A controversial murder trial got even more so yesterday when white ex-police officer Amber Geiger was sentenced to 10 years in prison for shooting and killing an unarmed black man, Botham Jean, in his own apartment. Protesters said the sentence, which was far short of the maximum 99 years Geiger could have gotten, was another instance of black lives being undervalued. And while Jean's mother called for more police training and for Geiger to use her 10 years to reflect and, quote, change her life, it was his brother's reaction that's getting all the attention. I can speak for myself. I, I forgive you. And I know if you go to God and ask him, he will forgive you. And I'm speaking for myself, not even bad for my family. But I love you just like anyone else. I don't know if this is possible, but can, can I give her a hug, please? Judge gave the okay, and then in front of a stunned courtroom, he hugged the woman convicted of murdering his brother. The judge later hugged Geiger, too, and gave her a copy of the Bible. Not exactly a common courtroom scene with a justice system that tends to focus solely on crime and punishment. But should forgiveness play a bigger role? Should the justice system itself be more forgiving? And if so, when? Those are some of the questions my next guest dives into in her latest book. It's called When Should Law Forgive? Martha Minow is the former dean of Harvard Law School. She's now a professor there. She is vice chair of Legal Services Corporation, which provides civil legal aid to low-income Americans. I used to be one of those people. It's great to see you, Martha. Congratulations on a great book. Thanks for having me. Can we start with this, Jean? Thing? What was your reaction to what the brother said on the stand and then the hug afterwards? I, I can only say that this was an act of grace on his part, and it's astonishing, and it's something I can't even imagine contemplating. It's something that, of course, the legal system can't order, um, but uh, I think it's something that many people aspire to, to be able to forgive. You've been around the law for a lot of time. A number of people called my radio show today and said that it is expected of blacks to forgive whites, but we never see the reverse. And we're sitting there thinking, and I think that's a pretty fair statement, isn't it? I, I do, and I think it's often expected of women to forgive men, mm -hmm. and we don't see the reverse. And so I think there's reason to be quite worried about uh, really forgiveness being a tool of the less powerful. Um, and at the same time, I don't want us to lose the sight that forgiveness is actually a resource that all of us have. I don't want to get off track, but for, and this is not a forgiveness issue. Uh, while I was so moved by what the brother did, I was appalled by the judge yeah, not only hugging uh, yeah. the family of the uh, murder victim, but then hugging and giving a Bible to the murderer in this case. was What was your reaction to that? Well, we do try to, to separate church and state here, and so that does seem like an unusual step for a judge. What does it mean for law to forgive? Does it just mean to exact less severe punishment than the law would allow? Is that what it, is that what it means? Not necessarily. I mean, it certainly could take that form. But it, what, what's really striking to me is that we have devices like pardons, mm -hmm. amnesties. We have bankruptcy in the area of debt, where law uh, actually builds in to the formal legal system mechanisms for forgiveness, meaning letting go of justified, warranted punishment, resentment, blame. And I think it's an acknowledgement that actually the system itself can be excessive, but also sometimes clearing the slate is the best bet for everybody. Well, I, I want you to explain a little mindset to me, because I have to say the bankruptcy example is so obvious, and I, I had never thought of it before. I would bet if we did a poll, the vast majority of Americans would be unforgiving about criminal law. But if you said to them, how about forgiveness of debt? And I know yes. you wrote that in 2005 we made it tougher for individuals yes. and small businesses yes. putting it aside to declare bankruptcy. Uh, how about getting a clean slate with your finances that all go like you're going, yeah, right. that makes sense. Where does that come from, that dichotomy? Once upon a time, they were much more united, and we actually have a religious root, uh, Judeo-Christian tradition in both. The Jubilee year in the Bible uh, it marked the possibility of having uh, forgiveness of debts and forgiveness of crime. Um, I do think that there, there is a difference in the United States, partly because as a constitutional matter, our Constitution guarantees that the Congress can create a bankruptcy law. And that's because of Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson, who was himself in debt during much of his own life, he knew the problem. But because he was Thomas Jefferson, he actually had a political theory about it, which is that one generation should not burden the next with its debts. 
Many people associate our bankruptcy regime in this country to the level of innovation and risk taking. Mm. So I agree with you. We have a different attitude towards uh, debt than we do about crime. You mentioned pardons, commutations, those sort of things. It seems to me we have this also my random thoughts, not uh, no hard data. We're OK sort of after you've paid your debt or sort of paid your debt. I can live with a pardon. I can live with something being expunged from your criminal records. You have a chance to get a job. It seems to me when the rubber hits the road, so to speak, is at the time of a prosecution. Mm -hmm. That is the toughest thing. Rachel Rollins has been here a lot of times. Rachel Rollins is one sure. of the prosecutors, obviously, Suffolk County, who has uh, uh, essentially exercised what every prosecutor has, prosecutorial discretion. Yes. Since they all have it, and they all exercise it. Why have been people been so bent out of shape about her using forgiveness, I would argue? Maybe just because she says it as opposed to just doing it? I think that, unfortunately, that may be the case, although she was even elected on uh, the, the platform. Yes, she, she was. would actually not use the power of the government to go after drug offenses and low-level offenses. Uh, they're scarce resources the prosecutors always have, and they have to make choices. And that exercise of choice reflects sometimes forgiveness, letting go of justified blame. You know, speaking of Rollins, the last time, one of the times she was here, it was right after the, a, a victim uh, who had been beaten pretty badly in Charlestown and gone to the Globe and said that she was appalled uh, by the non-sentence that the uh, Suffolk yes. County DA's office handed down. And uh, Rollins gave me some thoughts on uh, victims in these kinds of settings. Here's the DA. I have literally looked in the face of, of family members of, of homicide victims and said, I just want one year for every year my son lived. And that is less than what we were asking for. I've also looked in the face of people that have a misdemeanor crime committed against them, and they ask if Massachusetts has the death penalty. I have to tell them, no, we do not, nor would they ever be given that. So what is the role of the victim in forgiveness? Again, the Charlestown case, the woman was disgusted that, uh, that they gave yes. this nonsense. The other end of the spectrum, I guess, is uh, the Richard family, who lost their son, Martin, who wrote an op-ed in the uh, Boston Globe yes. saying, don't give the death penalty to Sarnayev. How much of a role should the victim's wish play in the decision about a prosecutor, for example, forgiving? I think it's relevant to know, but it's certainly not the most important uh, dimension. The criminal justice system represents the people, the community. Individuals who have been victimized, they can choose to forgive or not forgive. But that does not determine what is the interest of, this co of the community. You know, when I started reading this book, I think like a lot of people who are uninformed but think they know something, I fall into that category <laughs> big time. When I started thinking about forgiveness and law, I said, wow, obviously we're going to learn that the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in South Africa elevated that to perfection, to an art form. It's a mixed bag a, from what you write. Very much so. Why is it a mixed bag? Well, I think uh, because of the uh, worry that it's a second-class justice. It's a failure to actually pursue criminal responsibility. Uh, and it was a pragmatic political judgment. Uh, that's certainly one major criticism. Another criticism is that actually the country has continued to have turmoil and crime and uh, oppression. So that if it was supposed to be a cure-all, no, it's not. On the other hand, I think that we do have to see the role that the Truth and Reconciliation Commission played in South Africa in permitting a peaceful transition of power. Uh, are we getting closer to a place where the American public are, allow, are willing to allow our leaders to forgive? I think that we are the most uh, incarcerating and punitive uh, society in the history of humanity. Uh, and I think that there are now people across the political spectrum who are saying, too much. We need to turn. There may be a Out pendulum. Of compassion or concern for the bottom line? I think both. Mm -hmm. uh, there are interesting coalitions of yeah. Christian evangelicals, right. of uh, people who are concerned about uh, racial disparities, and also people concerned about economics. Before you came on today, I only have 30 seconds left. I got an email saying you now teach impeachment. I, is that true? I didn't I, know. If, I do. You really do? I do. Am I wrong in saying that? This president is a, a walking, breathing impeachment machine. I just played this China thing where he not only says, China, give me some dirt on Biden, but it comes after him talking about the trade talks and the power he has, sort of the ultimate quid pro quo. Am I overreacting or no? 
I can only tell you I was writing this book before the election, after he was elected. I realized I need now to come up with a definition about when we should not forgive. <laughs> Martha Minow, your book is great. Thanks so much. Thank I really appreciate so your time. The book again is When Should Law Forgive?